We're here at the National Motor Museum in Bewley to give you a few tips and ideas about how to photograph at an indoor museum, for how to photograph cars. The main issue photographing at a museum is the poor quality of the light. Feature exhibits are often dimly lit for atmosphere with little pinpoints of light all over the car. These pinpoints of light are the exact opposite of what you need to get a good photograph of the car, where its curved shiny surface will reflect every little bit of light around it. There are two ways of approaching the problem plus the option of mixing both processes. As a rule of thumb, inside photography benefits from uprating the ASA, or effective light sensitivity, of the camera chip. On cameras with a lower pixel rating of below about 16 megapixels, it's best not to exceed 800 ASA, as the quality of the image will suffer. But on a big chip camera, you can crank it right up to over 2000, before the image is compromised. Make sure you've set the camera to average white balance in the menu. That'll handle mixed light situations that you'll discover in the museum, like this. If you find that you're getting weird colours on your image, experiment with some of the other white balance settings, usually marked as a round tungsten bulb or a fluorescent tube. Remember, you can do some colour correction in post-production, if necessary. This will solve most low light problems and you can support the high ASA with a pop of on-camera flash to fill in the foreground. Remembering that most small flash guns are only effective up to about 12 feet on maximum range. You will need to reset your AWB setting if you intend to use flash, otherwise the image may look too blue as it will be balanced for daylight. The best solution at a show or museum, however, is to keep the camera on tripod and fill in the foreground with a pop of flash held away from camera at about one stop under the exposure. You'll find that with a bit of practice, you can tickle the flash into an exposure right up to quarter of a second, although it's easier if you're able to shoot at around one second, as this will give you more time. If you follow this technique, make sure you have your flash gun set to manual and adjust the power up or down as necessary. Shoot a range of styles. Single cars are good, but a wider group can make for a more interesting photograph. Most of the time you'll find the bonnets are closed on museum exhibits, but just occasionally they do leave them open and you'll get an opportunity to get that fantastic engine shot, like on this 1930 four and a half litre blower Bentley. If you intend to caption your images for a magazine or just to help you remember, a good tip is to take a picture of the information board. This will help you to remember all of the details more accurately. Don't forget to shoot those star cars. Did you know Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was actually based on a real racing car? Many museums offer stunning period scenes with feature cars part of the setting, such as in an old style garage or workshop. These are often more carefully lit with scene lighting creating a period mood and it's nice to let that ambient light come through by using a longer exposure. You may find that the museum won't allow you to shoot with a tripod or that you need permission to use one as they're often worried you'll block other visitors or become a safety hazard. Most people can hand hold a wide angle lens like this one down to about a thirtieth of a second, or slower if you can find something to rest the camera on.
in this case just boost the ASA to allow for hand holding. Telephoto lenses are harder to hold still due to their narrow angle of view, so you'll need a faster shutter speed of above a 60th or 1 25th of a second to avoid camera shake. Remember, a pop of flash in the foreground will also help to keep the image crisp. Some lenses now have image stabilisation, and if you have it, switch it on. Unless you're lucky enough to be there on a quiet day, you'll have to be patient and considerate to allow other visitors to see the exhibit whilst you take your photographs. If you have to, point out your camera to people in the way, and they'll nearly always move. But remember, they have just as much right to be there as you do, and always be polite. If you're shooting for a magazine feature, make sure you choose a range of angles using different lenses. And don't forget to shoot a wide-angle establishing shot as an opener for your photo story. This could be the entrance or the exhibition sign, or a wide view taking in some of the highlights of the show. Use the structure of the building to get some overviews from stairways or balconies. Dozens of images of individual cars taken from head height at front three-quarter will tend to look too similar and become dull, however fascinating the subject. So whether your passion is for great supercars like this incredible Bugatti Veyron or for Group B rally cars like the fabulous RS200 here, if you follow these ideas, you'll come home with some great pictures from your museum visit. <laughs>